the 1.35 meter long string has a mass of 4 grams. The vibrating part of the string is 1.03 meters long. The left end of the string is attached to this uh, vibrating motor with adjustable frequency. The right end of the string is attached to this hanging weight of 800 grams or 0.8 kilograms. A. Find the frequency needed for the string to vibrate in one loop. B. Find the frequency needed for the string to vibrate in two loops and the frequency for three loops. For part A, one loop is 1.03 meters long. And the one loop is also half a wavelength. This means the wavelength is 2 times 1.03, 2.06 meters. And we know that the speed of a wave is frequency times the wavelength, which is also the square root of the tension divided by mass per unit length for a transverse wave on a string. We're looking for the frequency, and the wavelength is 2.06. And uh, we also know the tension in the string is produced by this weight, 0.8 kilograms. That means the tension is 8 newtons. The mass per unit length, the mass is 4 grams, but we have to change it to kilograms. So the mass is 0 0.004 kilograms. The length for the 4 grams is 1.35 meters, not the 1.03. So we have to use 1.35 over here. And if we do this calculation, we will get 52. And 52 equals to frequency times 2.06. So we get frequency to be 25.2 hertz. Now let's see part B. If uh, two loops instead. The length of one loop equals to half a wavelength, which means the length of a loop is proportional to the wavelength because one half is a constant. If instead of having one loop on the string, now we have to fit two loops in, that means the length of one loop must change by a factor of one half. So the length of one loop changes by a factor of uh, one half. That means the wavelength changes by a factor of one half. And we know speed equals to frequency times the wavelength. It is still the same string under the same tension, so the speed stays the same. That means that if wavelength becomes halved, the frequency must double. The frequency used to be 25.2. Now if we double it, we get 50.4 hertz. What about three loops? If three loops, that means the length of one loop must change by a factor of uh, one-third because we have to fit in three loops instead of one in the same length. So the length of one loop changes by a factor of one-third. Since the length of a loop is proportional to the wavelength, that means the wavelength changes by the same factor. And uh, again, speed is frequency times the uh, wavelength. If the wavelength changes by a factor of one-third, that means frequency must triple in order to keep the speed the same. So this will be 25.2 times uh, 3, and that gives us uh, 75.6 hertz. So of course, this means uh, if we want four loops, it will be 25.2 times 4, and then five loops will be 25.2 times 5, and then six loops times 6, seven loops times 7, and so on and so forth. Now let's add a part C. If I keep the vibrating frequency at 25.2 hertz, but change the hanging mass so the string would oscillate in two loops, how much hanging mass is needed? Again, the length of one loop is uh, half a wavelength, which means it's proportional to the wavelength. And uh, if we change one loop to two loops, the length of one loop will become halved, 
which means the wavelength will be halved. And then speed equals to frequency times lambda. Now this time we're keeping the frequency the same. So frequency is the one that stays the same. That means that if wavelength changes by a factor of one half, the speed must also change by a factor of one half. Because we're changing the mass hanging over here, that means that we're changing the tension in the string. So we know we're going to use this equation. This, the speed of this transverse wave on a string is the square root of the tension divided by mass per unit length. And the, since it's the same string, and this string is not stretchable, it's not an elastic band. So the mass per unit length stays the same. So the speed is proportional to the square root of uh, tension. If the speed changes uh, by a factor of one half, speed changes by a factor of one half. That means the square root of tension changes by a factor of one half. And uh, we need the tension, so we have to square both sides. This means the tension has to change by a factor of one half squared, which is one fourth. So we used to have 0.8 kilograms hanging. Now we need 0.8 times 1 fourth, which is 0.2 kilograms or 200 grams over there. I have a setup that's just like this. So let's go look at the demonstration and see if our numbers work out. So here I have the string and uh, that's a meter stick. And the length of the string is uh, 103 centimeters, a little bit longer than the meter stick's length. And the weight over there, that's uh, 800 grams, 0.8 kilograms. So it's 8 newtons of tension in the string. And this here is a function generator, and this reading tells us uh, the frequency of the vibration. Okay, this function generator sends the signal to this vibrating source. Okay, so I'm going to increase the frequency, and we, ex we should expect to see one loop around the 25.2 hertz. So I'm increasing the frequency. Now it's uh, 6 hertz, 7, 8, 9, 10, 17, 19, 23, and now 24, and we can see there is a one loop. See if we can get the loop to be bigger. Okay, so let's see now it's 25.5 hertz. We get a very nice one loop. And to get two loops, we expect the frequency to double. So that means that we should expect to see two loops around 51 hertz. 25.5 times two. Okay, now it's uh, 30, 31, 32, 50. Now it's 50.5. So let's see if I can get larger amplitude than this. That's 51. Yep, 51 is pretty good. So now it's 51.02. Three loops, that will be three times the 25.5, which is the 76.5. So let's see. 55, 57, 60, 64, 69, 70, 71, 73, 74, 75, see if we can get the amplitude to be bigger, 76, 76.5, so that's pretty good, right? Three loops, and remember, this is for, we can touch the node, and the vibration can still go on, the standing wave will still be there, but if we touch the anti-node, then we destroy the standing wave. Okay, now let's see if we can get four loops. Four times 25.5. So it should be 102 hertz.
That was pretty good. Three loops. It's three loops, but not very stable. Let's see, 102. That's not 93. 95, 99, 100. And now we're starting to see four loops coming. Let's see, 102. That's pretty good. Okay, we can get a little larger amplitude. Oh, not stable. Okay, now 103. Seem to have bit. So it's around 102 and 103. And then five loops will be 127.5. So let's see, 121. Hundred and twenty-seven point three looks like a hundred and twenty-eight is pretty good. So it's very close to the hundred and twenty-seven point five we expect to have. A hundred and twenty-eight. Now it's five loops. Now I'm gonna go back down to one loop. So 25.5. Okay, I'm going to keep the same frequency over here. And uh, I'm going to change the weight. My goal is to change the weight so that the string would vibrate in two loops under the same frequency. For the same frequency, two loops. How much weight should I change that to? So let's see, I'm taking off, that's uh, 200 grams, 200 grams more, and then two more hundred. So now I have, the hook is 50 grams plus uh, 150 grams of weight. 200 grams of weight, one-fourth the tension. So now we do get nice two loops.